What can I even say about Castlevania 2 that hasn't already been said by the angry video game nerd himself? This game sucks. What a piece of shit. This game is the unholy fuckness. Castlevania? More like Assylvania. Am I right, James? <laughs> <laughs> Despite the infamy this game has, it's really not as bad as James Rolfe or Aaron Hansen would necessarily lead you to believe. James himself has even testified that Castlevania 2 is kind of a personal favourite of his. Well, Aaron Hansen quite liked the game, to an extent. Um, I am not sure, but I know he made a sequelitis where he kind of yeah. dunked on it. Well, so. I remember he was dunking on the nerd, because the nerd, he was like, yeah, I know the nerd said the game sucks, but Oh yeah, he does defend it. Game. He does defend it a bit. Though he so. does think, like, some of the game design is inherently flawed. I guess it's more that he still criticizes the game by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. It tries very boldly to change the formula around, and a lot of that, a lot of those concepts come out feeling undercooked. The day and night cycle, for example, must have been something that was way ahead of its own time and probably was kind of mind-blowing. Like, you just didn't have things like that at the time. However, the actual execution is, ki is not really all that fun. No one really wants to sit there for five to ten seconds watching the same wall of text tell you what a horrible night it is to have a curse just so that you can continue playing. Other typical complaints would include the typos, you now process Dracula's rib, the overall crypticness of the game and misinformation. So many NPCs are designed specifically to just lie to you. Simon Belmont in this game should just be as antisocial as possible and just ignore all of these dickheads and whip out a strategy guide or go to a GameFAQs article if he wants to know how to stop Dracula's curse anytime soon. I do enjoy the, the the tome the tome of the game facts that you find <laughs> in the back of the box yes there was also a cool line that simon belmont could contact in which some wise konami sages would tell him to crouch to the left and until a cold tornado appeared was to take him to plan? the final location it must have been this is definitely of its the crypticness of this game is definitely of its time as a lot of games that would come out were purposely dealt in riddles to encourage people to have to call these lines or buy a copy of Nintendo Power if you lived in America. Look at look at one of the most popular games that ever released in Japan around this time, Dragon Quest 1. That game is entirely dealt in riddles and just wandering around until you work out what the hell you need to do. And it worked! There are also multiple endings to encourage you to play the game faster as it's based on how many days and nights pass throughout the game. Thanks to all the typos and errors, the better you play at the game, the worse the ending will end up being if you live in the West. Which is... strange! They're saying they fucked up. <laughs> they fucked up massively! Other issues that have obviously been covered are how easy bosses can be, where you can just flat out walk past the Reaper, or you can just set Dracula on fire and he just gets rocked by Simon's arson. You think that's quite disappointing, because you were saying before that the, the bosses were like one of the best parts of mm. Castlevania 1, mm. and that they were probably the toughest bit as well. Mm. The bosses are like a main- the bosses are a main feature of these games, so it's really disappointing to see how underwhelming every single fight is. I would say the one I actually remember the most from this game was Camilla. I can't say why, I just remember her face being it's just the first really Camilla memorable. Boss. I think- I think this is the very first Camilla boss, yes. I see this game getting compared quite often to Zelda 2, and while I'd say the similarities are definitely there, Zelda 2 is very frustrating to play. It's a game that leaves me feeling very bitter by the end of it, if I even bother to try to get to the end of it. Whereas Castlevania 2, I can actually claim I've beaten more than once and actually 
did enjoy elements of it. And while, yeah, I'm going to play it with a strategy guide because I yeah, you have, have no because I have no patience. <laughs> it's still fun to go on that adventure. I feel like there weren't many games at the time that really felt that way, that were mm -hmm. both a platforming game and an adventure. Maybe this is why I like Metroidvania and Egovania so much, as this game is effectively a predecessor to that whole entire concept. So... In terms of other versions, I guess we should look into the Famicom Disk version of the game. You can save the game instead of having to use passwords, which obviously is a better alternative. There is a different sound font, however, it's awful. Bloody Tears starts to sound more like bloody ears to me. While I assumed that the translation would be better, it seems that even in the Japanese version, every NPC just flat out lies to you. So even in Japan, whether there were typos or not, none of the NPCs are particularly useful. There is a mod of Castlevania 2 titled Castlevania 2 Simon's Redaction, which fixes the dialogue so everyone actually has something worthwhile and useful to say. The text is much faster, which by extension actually makes the day and night transitions a lot faster. You still have to stop, like, you still have to watch the game pause for a couple of seconds, but rather than it being five to ten seconds it's more like three seconds instead i'm not sure i could be wrong on that if if you have to play castlevania 2 if you're just if you're sitting there at your house and you're just like i gotta play castlevania 2 man it's i'm gonna kill myself if i don't play castlevania 2 i need to possess dracula's rib and sit in a tornado absolutely play this version of the game it is way more entertaining and you won't need game facts to actually enjoy it you could potentially beat castlevania 2 without needing to look at a guide you probably still look at a guide but you could do it maybe <laughs> so would you say this is a worthwhile game overall i think if you're into castlevania history and you want to explore where the games came from I would say this is worth a go if you're a fan of retro gaming and you're a fan of older uh, NES style games. I'd say you could do a lot worse than Castlevania 2. Because this became quite relevant to the franchise in its later years, right? Yeah, I'd say relevance wise, especially if you're a fan of Egovania, it's interesting to just check it out just to see where that type of game came from, where it all sort of started. While Vampire Killer you could argue was maybe the start. Castlevania 2 was the one that actually made that idea trendy. At the time, this game was very well critically achieved. This was a acclaimed game. So it's only in recent years after the nerd came onto the scene that the game got a different reputation. But it was always sort of a black sheep, right? Because they did choose to go against it later on. Most definitely this game is a black sheep title, not unlike Zelda 2. I would still give it a go. 